All right, so if you've been following the, uh, my other videos on the Piper Cherokee, you know how important it is to make sure that the stabilator is set properly um, when you go to fly the airplane. Um, you can do this quickly at the field and then make some minor adjustments when you get back. That's what I've done here. I've flown the airplane a few times. I had to make some adjustments at the field to get this thing dialed in, and now I'm gonna do some fine tuning. But I think what's really important, and a lot of people miss this uh, when they set the Cherokee up, is how to set the full flying stabilator. It doesn't have um, you know, a horizontal surface and then you have the elevator that you can really align the two. Um, so you've gotta know what you're doing in order to get the airplane set up correctly. And the key to doing this is a little indentation, a little rectangular indentation inside the foam on the fuselage that needs to go to the leading edge of the stabilator. So let's take a look at what that is. All right, I brought the, uh, the airplane over here to the camera as best I can with a picture on the table. Right at the leading edge here, right about where my finger is, in fact, I can feel it right there, there's a really small indentation. That indentation is on both sides of the, um, of the fuselage. Is what you need to set the elevator in order to get the airplane in the air. Um, if you fail to do that correctly, you're going to have an airplane that's either going to uh, head right for the clouds or it's going to dive right into the ground. Neither one of those two things are great on a maiden, and I've had it um, where I had mine misadjusted and had a very scary maiden flight needed to be fixed. You can quickly adjust this with the um, with the uh, the servo uh, if you're at the field and get that thing, get the leading edge lined up. But you should really do that before you even get the airplane to the field. When you assemble the airplane, check that first to make sure that you have your adjustment correct. And then after that is set to the, the center of that indentation on the leading edge of the stabilator, you are now going to be set to go made in the airplane. Make any fine-tuned adjustments you're going to need to make and then bring it back to the, uh, the bench and then transfer the adjustments from the transmitter to the actual surface and we can know that as mechanically trim. So now that we've, we've talked about how to initially set it, the airplane flies great, we've dialed in our trim, let's go through and actually fine tune this um, so that we can match what it took to get the airplane to fly perfectly level, 50% throttle on a calm evening. To start with, I got a piece of paper here that I wrote down the, uh, the amount of elevator trim it needed uh, um, negative or down elevator in order to fly the airplane. Uh, perfectly straight so we're just gonna now that we have this written down we're gonna transfer that um, mechanically to the airplane and to do that we're gonna use my uh, makeshift um, height gauge here which is a caliper set on a little triangle I think that works pretty well so we'll get this set up and what we're gonna try to do is we're just gonna pick a point on the elevator and we're gonna set this uh, height gauge to it and then make our adjustments on the, uh, the scuba front All right, I have the, uh, the height gauge set. Um, I just picked a little spot here next to one of the, um, I think it's probably some sort of like an ejector pin mark that's uh, on the, uh, the stabilator here. It doesn't matter what you use. Sometimes I'll even tape this down and uh, kind of chalk the airplane out, but I think it's gonna be close enough for what we're doing today. So now I have something that is set on what the elevator is position-wise um, to make the airplane fly correctly. And really, in order to do this, you gotta have the, um, the battery needs to be plugged in. It needs to run through its system check. That way you know that the surface is now set to where it was at from the last time you flew. So now I have that in place. I'm gonna go ahead and um, loosen up the, uh, the mount here in the servo, and that will allow this thing to rotate uh, freely. Okay, that is loosened up and you gotta be very careful not to uh, move the airplane or move this when you do this, otherwise you are gonna have to start all over again. So it's loosened up and now I'm gonna go over and grab the uh, transmitter. All right, transmitter here. We're gonna go ahead and move our trim back to zero. There we go. We're now at zero and this is still loose so I can move it around as I need to. just took a little bit of a, a touch here in order to uh, straighten that out so let's uh, do that in fact it's almost such a small amount I'm gonna add a little bit of pressure with my hand I'm just gonna touch the end of this thing and bring it up to the height gauge the height gauge is solid enough where it's not going anywhere so I'm just gonna grab a hold of the very end and just hold it up against the height gauge 
and then I'm going to go in this with this hand and tighten up the push rod. That way I get, get it as close as I can to the neutral point of where this thing needs to be at. And be careful not to bump the airplane, of course. Here we go. All right, so that's nice and tight, and that is set. Of course, what's odd is that there's enough slop in here that um, I think the, the amount of slop that's in the linkage system is actually more than the amount of trim that needed to be. So I won't be surprised that when I get the airplane in the air, it may actually need a little bit of fine tuning again. But when you're talking about a couple, one or two clicks here and there, I'd say you're pretty well set because temperature, um, humidity, uh, flying conditions, they can actually alter some of the, um, the trim of the airplane. So if you're within that uh, just uh, like one or two clicks, I think you're relatively close enough. And the, really the, the idea here is, is just try to get it as close as you can so the AS3 ax is operating from its neutral point. All right, so we've talked about how to uh, adjust the surfaces and now you should be all set to get the airplane back in the air again. And I hope you guys really enjoyed the, some of the tips we went over today on how to mechanically trim uh, the stabilator on your Piper Cherokee. And of course, these, trips, these tips really kind of work for, um, for any airplane, but I think this was a great example of what to do. The indentation is unique to the Cherokee, but I think the method we use today to mechanically trim the airplane will work for about anything. So hope you guys enjoyed the, uh, the review today. And if you like this, make sure you hit subscribe and uh, leave your comments below.